Good morning. Flippin' physics. We have already discussed Faraday's law and electromagnetic induction. However, we did not include direction. Today we are going to add direction to Faraday's law by adding a negative sign and removing the absolute value. Believe it or not, the direction of the induced EMF caused by a changing magnetic flux is called Lenz's law. More specifically, Lenz's law states that the current induced in a circuit due to a change in a magnetic flux is directed to oppose the change in magnetic flux. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> To help us understand what that means, class. To determine the direction of the induced current in a loop caused by a changing magnetic flux, what handy tool do you think we use? The, the right hand, hand rule. Of course. <laughs> Don't be too cool. Limber up. And find your right I hand. I feel like we already did this. But it feels did so we? good. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Let's learn from doing examples. We have our wire loop, and initially there is zero magnetic field inside the loop, and therefore zero magnetic flux inside the loop. Finally, there is a magnetic field into the screen. Remember, the induced EMF and induced current are caused by the change in the magnetic flux, so the original magnetic field inside the loop is into the screen and increasing, therefore the original magnetic flux inside the loop is increasing. According to Lenz's law, the induced magnetic field opposes the change in the magnetic flux, and therefore there is an induced magnetic field out of the screen. The induced magnetic field is out of the screen because, according to Lenz's law, it is counteracting the change in the original magnetic flux, which is increasing. According to the right-hand rule, actually, it is the alternate right-hand rule with the thumb pointing in the direction of the induced current in the wire and the fingers curling in the direction of the induced magnetic field created by the induced current in the wire. So. According to the right-hand rule, fingers of the right hand curl in the direction of the induced magnetic field, which is out of the screen in the wire loop, and the thumb of the right hand points in the direction of the induced current in the loop, which makes the induced current in the loop in this example counterclockwise from this perspective. Again, the induced magnetic field is out of the screen caused by an induced current in the wire loop, which is counterclockwise from this perspective. Okay, that is our first example. Billy, please walk us through our second example. Okay. It looks like the original magnetic field in the loop is into the screen, and there is zero final magnetic field. So the original magnetic field is into the screen and decreasing, which means the original magnetic flux is into the screen and decreasing. The induced magnetic field opposes the change in the magnetic flux. The induced magnetic field attempts to maintain the original magnetic flux, so the induced magnetic field is into the screen. I thought magnetic flux was a scalar. How can the original magnetic flux be into the screen if it is a scalar and does not have direction? Good point, Bobby. This is a common point of confusion. Magnetic flux is a dot product, so magnetic flux is a scalar. So the induced magnetic flux does not have a direction. However, the induced magnetic field does have a direction. And the direction of the induced magnetic field in the plane of the loop is always normal to the plane of the loop in which the induced current is created. Got it. The induced magnetic field in the plane of the loop is always normal to the loop in which the induced current is created. Thanks. So please, Billy. Start back at the beginning of this example, and remember magnetic flux is a scalar and does not have direction. Certainly. The original magnetic field in the loop is into the screen and decreasing. The induced magnetic field opposes that change in the magnetic flux, so the induced magnetic field is into the screen to try to keep the magnetic flux constant. And the direction of the induced current in the loop? Uh, according to the alternate right-hand rule, the fingers curl in the direction of the induced magnetic field, which is into the screen. Thumb points in the direction of the induced current, which is clockwise from this perspective. That is a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it kind of is, but it's also pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay, Bobby, please walk through the next example. Okay. Initially, the magnetic field inside the loop is into the screen. The magnetic field is the same direction at the final point, but the area of the loop has decreased. 
Okay, so because the area of the loop is decreasing, the magnetic flux through the loop is decreasing. The induced magnetic field opposes that change in magnetic flux, so the induced magnetic field is into the screen to attempt to maintain the original magnetic flux. According to the right-hand rule, the fingers curl into the screen in the direction of the induced magnetic field, thumb points in the direction of the induced current, which is clockwise from this perspective. The induced current from this perspective is clockwise. Very nice, Bobby. Bo, please do the next one. Sure. But I don't really get the illustration. What, what am I looking at? Initially, the loop is normal to the plane of the screen. So all you can see is the profile of the loop. Then the wire loop is turned such that at the final point, the loop is parallel to the screen. Got it. Thanks. It, initially, the magnetic field is out of the screen, but what we are really interested in is the initial magnetic flux. Initially, the magnetic field is parallel to the wire loop, so zero magnetic field lines pass through the loop, so initially there is zero original magnetic flux. The loop is turned so that at the final point, the magnetic field is out of the screen and passing through the loop. So the original magnetic flux is increasing in magnitude. That means the induced magnetic field is opposite the direction of the original magnetic field to try to maintain a constant magnetic flux through the loop. So the induced magnetic field through the loop is into the screen. Using our right hand, we curl our fingers into the screen and our thumb points clockwise from this perspective in the direction of the current induced in the wire. <laughs> yeah, the induced current is clockwise from this perspective. But which way did you rotate the loop? Ah, uh, yes, Billy, thanks. Notice that no matter, no matter which way I turn the loop, the change in the magnetic flux through the loop is the same, and the induced magnetic field is into the screen caused by the induced current, which is clockwise from this perspective. That is strange. It does not matter which way you rotate the loop. The, in, the induced current will always be clockwise from this perspective. Okay, I guess sometimes physics is strange. Yes, Billy. Bobby, please do this one. Okay, the original magnetic field is parallel to the loop initially. Uh, that means initially there is zero original magnetic flux through the loop. The magnetic field then turns and at the final point is into the screen. So the original magnetic flux is increasing. The induced magnetic field opposes this changing magnetic, magnetic flux. So it produces a magnetic field which is out of the screen. According to the right hand rule, fingers curl out of the screen in the direction of the induced magnetic field and thumb points in the direction of the induced current in the loop, which is counterclockwise from this perspective. If the magnetic field is changing directions, how is the induced magnetic field always normal to the plane of the loop? The induced current is what causes the induced magnetic field. In a previous lesson, we showed that the magnetic field around a current carrying wire forms circles around the wire and decreases in magnitude as distance from the wire increases. We even used Ampere's law to derive the equation for the magnitude of the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. Okay, I get it. The induced magnetic field is only normal to the plane of the loop in the plane of the loop. In locations outside the plane of the loop, the magnetic field is sort of in the shape of a torus. Torus? What is a torus? A donut. Oh. Yes, thank you. That is a great explanation. Billy, please explain this last example. Certainly. Initially, the magnetic field is in the plane of the loop, so zero field lines pass through the loop, and there is zero initial original magnetic flux. The magnetic field turns 90 degrees, but the final magnetic field is also in the plane of the loop, and therefore the final magnetic flux is also zero. Therefore, there is no change in the magnetic flux in this example. So there is no induced magnetic field and no induced current in the wire. Absolutely, Billy. When there is no change in the magnetic flux in the loop, there is no induced magnetic field, even if the magnetic field is changing directions. 
I hope that helps clear up Lenz's law, which describes the direction of the induced current in a loop, which is created by a changing magnetic flux. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoy learning with you.